Okay, now we're, we're in PhotoP. We have our vector in either our EPS or our SVG. The vector.com or a vector file won't work. An AI file won't work. It has to be one of these transferable vector formats. And we've placed it. And then I created three different backgrounds, black, gray, and white. And now I'm going to click on the side of the layer, not on the words, not on the image, but on the side of the layer. And then I'm going to get the layer styles. You can mess this up. <laughs> you know, you can move these, but don't. <laughs> so the defaults are great. They give you all the opportunity you can. Uh, the, the little slider means you can move one up or down because they're stacked in order. And the plus sign means you can add multiples if you want. But these are plenty complicated enough to, to start with. So what does this mean? What do we do? I'm going to make this pretty big so I have some room so you can see what these layer styles do. Remember, this is on a duplicate of my smart object vector black shape logo. So the most basic one is color overlay. If you click on that, then it doesn't look like it did anything. But then if you click on the actual title of it, you'll get to your options. Just on the name color overlay. So let's start from the beginning. So if I double click on the gray of the layer, I get to this. Nothing is checked. If I go to color overlay, it will check and it will highlight just like a layer. Once it's highlighted, I get my settings. And you're right that the default for it is 100% black, which is what our logo already is. All I have to do to change that is to change the color. See, when I click on the color box, uh -huh. I don't have any colors. So you're in this color picker and there's no color options? Um, I can see the color picker color, but they don't show up as drop-downs. Um, okay. I'll come look. It might have to do with a mode that you're in. But what we want is for this to be in just standard RGB mode, and then you'll see all the millions of colors that you can choose. Now, Day of the Dead, what kind of colors? Like red's a pretty good color. So I can put red in. Now, here's the problem. When you do color overlay at 100%, doesn't, that means anything underneath that isn't going to show, right? Because that's in the middle. And the one I like even more than color overlay, if I turn that off for the moment, is the one underneath it, gradient overlay. So you might try Betsy and see if you can get colors with gradient overlay. But if you click on gradient overlay, you'll see that the, the default is just black to white at 90 degrees. But you can click on the gradient just like you can click on the color for color overlay. And then you can actually set your own gradient colors. So I can decide to gradate it from, yellow, from red to orange, you know, to blue. I mean, I, I can just add as many as I want to this gradient. To white, and then I can even kind of move their order. And you'll see what it does to my logo colors as I go through. And let's change that color to, let's say, a green. Yeah, nice. All right? And now, I say OK. The problem with all these layer styles is each step you have to say OK. They're all just previews until then. So now I've kind of created this rainbow gradient. I can also set the angle for it. So pretty. And I can also set the scale of it. So how spread out or how condensed is it? So that's pretty nice. I can also set the opacity of it. And because my default pixels in the layer are black, as I use opacity, it's just going to get darker and darker. All right, what's another thing? I can add a color overlay on top of that. If it's at 100% normal, it's just going to be red. But then I can take the opacity down, and then it will blend that red into everything in my gradient. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe I don't want normal mode. Maybe I want multiply mode, which darkens everything. Or I want color dodge. Right, which brightens everything, or I want pin light, which is kind of a mix of both, or overlay mode. You know, so all these different options are available to us, and that's just with color overlay and gradient overlay. Now, yes. Mm -hmm. 
the black only stays under. So it depends on what the opacity is, right? If the opacity of your layer itself is low, then it will do almost nothing. So check that. I'll come around and check your settings. Now what's great about layer styles is they don't impact your smart object at all. It's going to stay that same vector, but when you click on it, that little drop down at the side, then you can always alter it. So let me just go through the other ones really quickly. So you can set different opacities for them. I'm going to keep the gradient at 100%, my color overlay. Let's do that on, let's say, lighten. And let's do that a little bit brighter. Okay, so about there, 74%. Then we can turn on satin. Satin is a weird thing. It kind of gives you a wave of highlights and shadows through it. You can try it on different blending modes, see if you like it. And then, of course, you can play with its opacity. Inner glow. So now, once we get through these, and you can decide whether you want satin or not. It just gives you a little bit of, of variations through it. Um, now, it's helpful to use these backgrounds. So I like to use a gray background. Because now with color, how can I make this show up on a gray background? The effect that's most helpful for that is it's called an offset because you're putting something between your image and its substrate and its background. So one way to do that is to add a stroke. I'm going to add a stroke to the outside. I'm going to make that stroke solid white. And then I'm going to make it on the outside large enough so that I can see it on the gray background. Now, if I don't like things coming together, I don't need to put it on the outside. I can put it at the center so it grows out from the middle. Or I can even put it on the inside of my lines, which is something that doing a stroke in a vector file doesn't allow you to do. All right. Other options for offsets. Things like drop shadows. So that drop shadow is not going to work on, on black as a background, but it's definitely going to help on white and anything lighter than black. But you see how that white really helps it show up on the black. Even if I turn off my colors, you can see how the white helps it show up on the black. So that's what an offset is. Inner glow gives you a glow on the inside, just like it says. So I'm going to turn off the others for now and just show you what this can look like. We're going to spread it out, though. It's like a, a drop shadow from the inside of your lines. And I'm going to make the size bigger. So it now looks like kind of neon lights. And the reason it wasn't showing up as first is because my stroke was covering it. Right? So now I have a white stroke and a yellow neon glow coming from that stroke. And the reason I have these little lines that aren't good, that's because that's the SVG, not the EPS, <laughs> where I, need, I had to turn those off. But here's what's great about layer styles again, and I'll come around and help you with your settings once I'm processing this. Because I kind of like that, that crazy glow. Ah, let's turn those off. Oh, what happened to my glow? I gotta say okay. You can't just leave it without saying okay. But remember, you can always turn these on and off later. Okay, so now let's bring in my EPS file, which didn't have those the little SVG like complicated things. Let me make it a little bit bigger, place it on top, even though it's black on black. But here's what's neat is I can just take all of these effects and I can just move them onto the new file. And that EPS does not have those little stray marks that I failed to delete, right? Because an EPS, you can turn them off and then save it. But anyway, we'll make it all work. So that works on gray, it works on white, works on black. Maybe I want to add some color. And I can adjust all of this how much. 
And then there are others. There are textures you can add, though these get a, a little overused. And the, the pattern that you use, I would just use a really basic one, like a little dot pattern. And then you can play with its depth and its scale and make it as subtle as you want. This is actually what's called a, a halftone pattern. We'll learn about this more when we get into printing. But that can give you more complexity if you think that's nice. And I don't actually like it, but sometimes it works. So you play with all these. Once you get to the color one you like, I want you to just turn off your backgrounds and you're going to save it, file, export as a PNG. That's what's going to go onto Canvas. And that's what would go onto a website, right? What if you want certain things to be different colors and everything else? Well, you do this with your vector. You lasso the parts that you want to be a different color. Like I want the eye to be glowing bright red, right? I just lasso around it and then I duplicate, Command J. And now I change the effects just for that eye. And I'll put red up all the way on normal. Right. And I can take the inner glow down a little bit. And then maybe for this cheekbone, what do I do? I'm going to lasso it. And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. And then I'm going to adjust its settings. I actually kind of like those settings, but I'll just adjust the, uh, the gradient overlay to be a different angle, just on that one. And maybe a slightly different scale. So it's more subtle. And then I need to, I'm going to actually get rid of the drop shadow just on this layer, because I already have it coming from the layer underneath. Now, even though these are now rasterized, they are outputted from the vector. So as long as you always have the vector there, that black shaped vector, you're golden. It all works. And you can adjust anything as you go. Okay. So now I've saved it. I'm going to save it also as a PDF. Or not a, P a PDF, a PNG. I actually don't know if I like this I. So I'm going to take its opacity down a little. There we go. Make it kind of a dead eye. All right. So now I'm going to export it as a PNG. What if I want to print it? Well, I need to first save it as a PSD. And this is no longer going to be a black shape vector. It's a color shape vector. And then I want to flatten it to make it print ready. And I say file export as more a TIFF, our archive file format, and then save. And you flatten it before you save it as a TIFF. And then you can close it. Now from that same PSD file, which is right here, I can open it up in Photopea, I can get my black shape vector and my color vector, right? To get my black shape vector, I just turn off all the color copies and turn on the black shape. And I can always just duplicate my color copy and then just turn off the effects. So if you want, you can make your black shape one. I'll just do it on, on gray so you can see it. And I can just turn off all these effects and it will be black again. And then if I want a stroke on it to help with the offset, I can leave that on. Not that you're going to see it on white, but as a PNG you would. And then on black, it will help you see it. So when we do spot illustrations, t-shirt designs and stuff, we're going to need to add an offset so that they can go on white t-shirts, black t-shirts, all that. And I think this is going to be the one I print. So I'm going to say file. Um, well, first, I'll update my PSD because I've got all the effects in there. 